Hi guys, I'm Serena. I am Pastor David's wife here at New Vintage Church, and welcome to week four of In Motion. I'm going to be sharing with you guys from passage uh, Mark 4, chapter 4, and it'll be verses 4 through 20. I'll actually start out in verse 3, because that's kind of the setup to the parable. And this is where Jesus was teaching the crowd by the lake in parables. Verse 3 says, Listen, behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured it. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where it did not have much soil, and immediately it sprang up, since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. And other seed fell into good soil and produced grain, growing up and increasing and yielding thirtyfold and sixtyfold and a hundredfold. And he said, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was alone, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parables. And he said to them, To you it has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. But for those outside, everything is in parables, so that they may indeed see, but not perceive, and may indeed hear, but not understand, lest they should turn and be forgiven. And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word, and these are the ones along the path, where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes the word that is sown in them. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground, the ones who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy. And they have no root in themselves, but endure for a while. Then, when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are the ones sown among thorns. They are those who hear the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things enter in and choke the word and it proves unfruitful. But these were the ones sown on the ground, on the good soil, are the ones who hear the word and accept it and bear fruit thirtyfold and sixtyfold and a hundred. So just kind of going back through that, it talks about basically the different soils of our hearts and how the word falls into each soil. And most of us can relate to one of those four. And thinking back through that, the one that I would say I related to for most of my life would have been more the rocky soil. And I had researched that a little bit because when I read this parable, I wasn't 100% sure what they meant by the rocky soil and having no root of themselves. But in researching it, I, I read some parable, or um, sorry, a sermon that Spurgeon had done. And he mentioned that people who have no root of themselves tend to be the people who were dependent on externals or other people for their faith. So they didn't have root inside themselves because they were not nurturing that of themselves. They were relying on their parents or outsiders or other people at church to water or take care of that seed and that to grow in them. But there was no actual root inside themselves. And most of my life, I was raised in a Christian home. I knew the Bible but it was more religion without conviction. There wasn't personal depth because I hadn't nurtured that in myself. So that is one that I would say I relate to most of my life. Um, another one would be the thorny ground, obviously, because I think most of us can relate to that, especially in modern days. Um, the deceitfulness of wealth, distractions, all the things that come in and steal our, our focus from what is important. and the watering of the word in our lives. So I just encourage you guys to go through, kind of search your heart and question yourself. Ask yourself questions about what soil your heart most relates to and what actions you might need to take to fertilize or till or nurture that soil. Um, let's get into our discussion so we can start putting these biblical truths from the Gospel of Mark into motion.